Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. For today's video we're going to be ranking worst to best the Transformers Studio Series Dark the Moon figures. Now before we get into today's video, as always I'd really appreciate it if you guys could all smash that like button and as always please feel free to let me know your own ranking down in the comment section below. Now I recently put out a Bumblebee movie ranking video and you guys appeared to really enjoy that and as you all know Dark of the Moon is by far my favourite entry into the live action movies. It is indeed the movie that truly got me into Transformers and in order to kind of almost celebrate that I thought why not in fact actually rank every single studio series figure that we've seen for Transformers 3 by ranking the worst to first. Now before we delve into the video a few things worth mentioning is that of course this is my own ranking so you guys may in fact actually have figures of which appear slightly higher or slightly lower on the list and honestly I'd love to hear your own rankings down below and most of these figures do in fact actually have some sort of modifications made to them whether that be customizations to the paint apps or just the DNA design upgrade kit but I have in fact actually kind of exempted that from the ranking so despite these figures having those upgrades they still would have in fact actually got these specific spots that they've received and another thing worth mentioning is that there's going to be an awful lot of gushing in this video there are so many figures on this list of which truly are dream items to me and almost a decade since Dark of the Moon did in fact actually hit the silver screen when we got the likes of the leader class Megatron Shockwave literally it blew my mind as those are all figures that I really wanted to get back in 2011 so with all that being said let's kick start this list by taking a look at what is undeniably the worst studio series figure that we've seen for Transformers 3 so far and it is undoubtedly the Dark of the Moon Toys R Us exclusive studio series Thundercracker. Now as an actual standalone release itself this is a great figure Thundercracker based on the Nitro Zeus mold from Transformers The Last Night. What's not to love? However it's kind of a random release. Thundercracker of course never in fact actually appeared in any of the Michael Bay live action movies especially in this kind of design and considering we didn't almost see this character model until Transformers Age of Extinction it really does beg the question as to why Hasbro even put this guy together but with that being said it's got a wicked looking head sculpt a really cool almost Bayverse insectoid head of which definitely would in fact actually suit some of those Dark of the Moon characters and I think the colour scheme is wicked in regards to a repaint for the studio series line this is probably one of the best ones we've seen however once again it's not accurate to any source material that we actually saw in the movie hence why it has been ranked as the lowest entry but it was also a Toys R Us exclusive and sadly I think it was the final Toys R Us exclusive we saw before they went into liquidation however apparently they're coming back this year in the UK so maybe towards the end of this year we'll in fact actually be reviewing even more Toys R Us exclusives who knows then we move on to the next worst spot and as many of you probably expected it is the Transformers Dark of the Moon crankcase slash crowbar unfortunately I couldn't find my crowbar figure anywhere in the collection so this spot is almost a tie-in for both crowbar and crankcase but more specifically for crankcase this figure is just so inaccurate literally Hasbro could have taken the Berserk mold that we saw for Transformers 5 and literally just repainted it or even just given us a simple repack and it would have been so much more accurate when in comparison to this figure but with all that being said in regards to an almost crowbar repaint slash retool they did a fantastic job the head sculpt is a dead ringer for that dread in the movie I think the actual kind of remolding they did to the SUV from the original Berserker mold is incredibly well done they really did do a fantastic job and the dreads that we've actually got going on too are so much better when in comparison to the crankcase that we saw for the original Transformers Dark the Moon toy line. I don't know about yourselves, but at least on my copy, I had about three of them and every single one of them broke due to the transparent plastic that those dreads were attached to. But still, it's a decent figure, but definitely not one of my most anticipated out of the line. And in comparison to some of the other whoppers that we've got on this list, trust me when I say it does in fact actually fall slightly short. Then we jump on to Dark the Moon Ratchet. This guy's actually pretty decent. I've always thought that the Studio Series Ratchet was definitely by far the best mainline representation we've ever seen for the character. Up until this point, many of the Ratchet figures were plagued with dreadful QC. They were either massive and chunky, or just literally didn't even resemble how he appeared on screen. So when we got that first almost 2007 version, it was actually the best release. And then of course, the Dark the Moon reissue kind of just sort of expanded upon that, gave us what is in my opinion, the better color scheme for Ratchet, that being the much darker green. They finally Finally gave us the almost EMP blaster that he used and the paint apps for the face were significantly improved when in comparison to the 07 release however sadly unlike some of the previous figures of which they kind of reworked such as the studio series 05 Optimus and then of course into the SS32 Optimus there was no retooling going on with this guy at all which is a slight shame I definitely think they could have added a few additional hinges to that rack on the back just to kind of make it slightly more compressed and to be honest had they fixed that this figure would have been so so much better than in fact it actually turned out now sadly 
sadly with the addition of the paint apps for the face it did lack in paint apps in other areas of which the 2007 version had so it is a shame that despite this being a re-release essentially they gave us basically the same amount of paint apps just in different areas and overall once again much like crowbar and crankcase despite this being a decent mold in comparison to some of the other dark of the moon figures we've got going on this list it's definitely not the best and then we jump into a lineup of which is actually one after the other that being the dark of the moon wreckers and i've ranked them in the order of which personally i think they deserve so on the lower end of the list is dark the moon leadfoot now don't get me wrong this guy was a dream item for me but literally about i'd say 12 months before this guy's release i actually finally was able to track down one of those incredibly elusive cancelled dark the moon leadfoot releases i think you guys will recall way back in 2019 i did this almost holy grail acquired video and it was that a long last i finally managed to pick that original figure up and a huge kick in the teeth hasbro announced a new mainline figure of which was vastly superior to that making that figure completely redundant but anyhow this is a really cool lead foot in regards to robot mode it's by far the most accurate version that we've ever seen and in regards to vehicle mode leaps and bounds more accurate when in comparison to the mainline human alliance version i think the proportions are on point the only thing that was really letting it down was that the torso was definitely prone to becoming detached quite a lot and not to forget that the missiles on the belly definitely did have a tendency to fall off almost every single time and due to the nature of the design considering he's slightly more chubbier of a design it is rather difficult to actually get this guy into some cool poses meaning that nine times out of ten he's just sort of a background character that just kind of looks cool the next record that i actually thought was better than this was the transformers dark the moon roadbuster now this was indeed our first record that i believe we got for the studio series and even to this day i think it's a fantastic looking figure such an improvement when in comparison to the mainline deluxe release we got it was finally weaponized i have no idea as to why hasbro decided to release some of the records initially in 2011 without their weaponized alt motors that was truly what they were known for in the movie but this guy was so accurate to the film i thought they did a fantastic job where the vehicle mode was concerned the fact that we actually get some awesome nascar details on this was wicked the transformation sadly was on the slightly more simpler side it was more of a shell former than anything meaning that he actually ended up with quite a big backpack which truly in my opinion is this figure's major downfall had they kind of took the engineering ever so slightly further i think that overall it could have been a little more enjoyable than it turned out but bot mode and vehicle mode i thought was awesome if anything it was lacking in regards to sort of firepower but of course the dna design kit did come out and almost rectify that but still really cool figure but the best wrecker out of them all in my opinion is the studio series transformers 3 top spin now initially we already got a killer figure way back in 2011 for this guy it was fully weaponized literally hasbro went all out back in the day but this studio series version just took it up a notch in regards to screen accuracy where the bot mode was concerned it literally looked incredible especially in regards to the head sculpt i loved the design of the wreckers and this figure truly captured what we saw on screen the mechanical detail looked awesome the blue they used for the plastic just popped in contrast to kind of the mechanical gray that the majority of the figure had been cast in i actually thought the kibble on the arms turned out really nicely and the vehicle mode much like the previous two was so so nicely done the only downfalls to this guy would be that initially he came with these really stupid pliable pvc rubbery weapons which let's be honest looked pretty crap in comparison to the rest of the figure but overall i definitely think this is the best wrecker that we've seen so far and then we jump on to another figure of which is slightly higher up on the list that being transformers 3 dark the moon sideswipe now had we not recently received the revenge of the fallen version this guy would have been so so much higher up on the list i just think that in regards to the transformers 2 version the paint apps on this figure sadly do kind of lack especially where the torso and the head is concerned but as an actual mold once again undeniable the best mainline side swipe we ever saw it didn't have a particularly large backpack i thought they did a really really nice job in giving us both the mexican standoff guns as well as those awesome arm blades and overall the articulation too was pretty decent and considering the design of side swipe does kind of make him have these wheels as feet i also thought that the stability in bot mode was definitely one of the best we'd seen for a mainline movie side swipe and the transformation whilst was rather complex sadly it was a little fiddly due to him being on the slightly smaller side so it did make him a little more frustrating to transform but it resulted in an incredibly awesome Corvette Stingray of which up until this date has always remained one of my favourite Transformers vehicles that we ever saw from some of those Michael Bay movies. And then really and truly we're in kind of like the last three or four now. The next spot actually goes to a huge fan favourite that being Dark the Moon Jetwing Optimus Prime. Now undeniably Optimus Prime's look from Transformers 3 is by far his best out of all of the live action movies. The Last Night, Age of Extinction, Revenge of the Fallen, the first movie. I think he looked absolutely beast in Dark the Moon especially when he got that Jetwing kit from the trailer and at long last Movie Prime actually got his trailer so straight off the bat just in terms of the design of the movie it was already fantastic but the Studio Series toy actually gave us our best representation of Jetwing Prime yet up until this 
point. The main nine releases for this guy were pretty poor to be honest we got the ultimate optimus prime which was basically fairy prime it was him just kind of harnessed in this huge trailer with these really ridiculous looking wings the articulation was terrible and in regards to the accuracy of the movie it literally didn't resemble anything that we saw and this figure literally perfected that we actually got the jetpack we got those two massive cannons we got the trailer of which actually transformed into an annular ring as well as additional accessories we got the blades we did in fact actually get the axe which was really cool and i believe we got one almost ion blaster so overall it definitely was the complete package where I think it lacked severely though was in regards to pain the trailer was just a mere gun metal which really was a stark contrast when in comparison to the metallic chrome that the actual trailer was in the movie and the weapons were all for the most part unpainted or hollowed out so I did indeed actually take a can of spray paint fully decked out that trailer in metallic silver and my goodness it looks so much better for it and the jetpack and the guns that you're seeing in this particular turnaround are all from the DNA design kit of which personally I think in fact actually make this the best Optimus Prime jet wing that I own in the collection, maybe being slightly rivaled by the Takara Jetwing Prime, but that's a whole other story as of course that is a Takara import, but definitely a really cool Optimus out of all of the Bayverse Primes, this is undeniably the best one that we've seen for the Studio Series so far. And then that brings me to my next pick, which I'm almost certain you guys probably would have thought would have been lower on this list, but it is the Dark the Moon Soundwave. Much like Leadfoot, all of Soundwave's figures sadly were completely cancelled for Transformers 3. They were all scheduled to be in, I think it was like the final waves of the Human Alliance version was scrapped as so was the deluxe version luckily i was able to pick both of those up but for the majority of us they became super elusive to track down so i know for a lot of transformers 3 collectors this guy truly was a blessing in disguise as it gave us our most affordable and most accessible option to actually picking a dark of the moon sound wave up and the figure turned out fantastic in regards to robot mode it's probably the best sound wave that we've ever seen and produced officially by hasbro for the main line it looks fantastic the mercedes-benz sls amg also looks terrific surprisingly they didn't skimp out on paint apps which is really surprising for Hasbro so all of the key areas that you wish were in metallic silver are definitely painted the only areas of which I think this guy is slightly lacked in would be in regard to kind of some of the electric blue highlights that we had around the speakers in the movie and that was also something the human alliance version had so I do wish we could have seen some blue on the arms and of course he came with no firepower at all he merely just included a dark the moon laser beak of which upon reflection considering we're seeing a more updated upgraded version in the core class later this year I wish they maybe could have just scrapped that figure in addition of his cannon that we see him use in the movie but definitely a fantastic figure i love this dark of the moon sound wave and it demolishes that terrible revenge of the fallen satellite version that we got and then moving now to kind of the final four and the fourth pick honestly is such a dream item for me you guys all know how much i love dark of the moon megatron and at long last i think it was towards the end of 2019 hasbro and takara did in fact actually give us a leader class dark of the moon megatron of which for the main line was completely unheard of up until this point we'd merely only received the voyager class class dark of the moon figure of which whilst wasn't terrible of course when in comparison to the actual movie design it did kind of lack it was incredibly lanky it didn't come with that awesome shotgun that he used in the movie and overall just in comparison to this studio series version it was pretty rubbish to be honest so suffice to say when we actually saw official images for this figure my mind absolutely exploded not only was dark of the moon megatron finally in the leader assortment but he came with the shotgun he was actually a bigger figure he had the tarp he had the chains he did in fact actually include an igor figure and the truck mode also looked pretty decent. Overall, I think this is a pretty awesome Megatron. The only areas of which, sadly, it lacks in would be in regards to hollowness. This guy is probably one of the most hollow and kind of cheap-feeling leader figures that we've seen from the Studio Series so far, which is unfortunate, as I think had they released this maybe 10 years ago, we could have, in fact, actually received a much, much better figure. But designed for bot mode, undeniably the best official offering for a Transformers 3 Megatron. I think the articulation isn't too bad. Transformation isn't that complex for a figure of which is in the lead class and I think it results in a pretty decent truck mode the only reason why he's not slightly higher up on the list once again is kind of down to bad QC the hips were very loose and of course those back legs were super super kibbly so I do wish that in some regards they maybe could have waited a couple of years maybe an additional two just to kind of refine the transformation and maybe fill out some of those hollow voids and then we jump into the third spot and honestly this guy almost took the first spot but to be fair I had to kind of set my love for the character off to the side and just focus solely on a toy and it is Transformers 3 
3 Dark the Moon Sentinel Prime. Voyager class figure, honestly, it is incredible. Up until this point, I've always regarded the leader class offering to be fantastic, and for the most part, it is. It's a really, really well done figure, but this new Voyager Studio Series version is undeniably the best and the most accurate version we've ever seen. In regards to paint, it looks killer. Detail is awesome. The head sculpt alone literally destroys any of the previous competition. I think articulation is pretty decent. I would have maybe loved to have seen some ankle pivot, considering that he was a very agile character in the movie, but that really is just nitpicking. He was one of the main characters from Transformers 3, arguably one of the most enjoyed villains amongst us Bayverse fans. I really do think that in regards to an actual movie villain, he was probably the best that we saw from those five Michael Bay movies, and the transformation was very involved for a Voyager, and it resulted in a wicked looking fire truck. The only areas of which this guy once again sadly lacked in would be in regards to accessories. The original sword that he included was pretty puny. Sadly, they didn't pack in the shield, nor the rust cannon, which I personally think was a major missed opportunity. And also the waist definitely had a tendency to become detached, which actually made handling him quite annoying at some points. But other than that, in regards to an actual collector's piece, a standing piece on the shelf, it does look incredible. And it was so good that a third party company actually took it, upscaled it into the original venerable. And that piece is by far one of my holy grail third party items that I own in the collection. And then we turn to second spot. And you guys all know my love for this character and this figure. It is Transformers 3, a Dark of the Moon Dino. Honestly, if there was probably one figure I had to choose to get made for Studio Series, it would have been Dino. Just as back in 2011, we never ever saw a Dino due to the ongoing licensing disagreement that was going on with Hasbro and Ferrari. For some reason, they couldn't get the license for Ferrari to produce a figure, so they just kind of left it. They never, in fact, actually produced a mainline version. Takara kind of picked up on that in the Lost Stage Age of Extinction line and gave us a redeco and retool of Sideways, but sadly, it was way out of scale when in comparison to the other figures, and due to the limitations of the Sideways mold, it wasn't great and of course just wasn't accurate to the movie so here comes our studio series offering the best version of Dino that we've ever seen besides maybe the third party offering but honestly the bot mode looked incredible and when I actually saw this guy officially revealed I remember literally going berserk it was such a dream item to get produced sadly they still couldn't get the Ferrari license but instead they kind of harkened back to his vehicle mode appearance in the Dark of the Moon video game so in a sense it is in fact actually very accurate to how he appeared on screen and overall it's a very impressive figure I think bot mode looks great vehicle modes great transformation is in fact actually quite complex for a deluxe and he did in fact actually come with those signature arm blades the only areas of which i think he kind of lacks in would be that i would have loved to have seen those almost whips that he lassoed onto the dreads during the highway sequence and maybe i would have liked to have seen the addition of a waist joint and ankle rocker pivot just he was a very agile character in the movie but definitely dino is one of those holy grail items in a studio series which even to this date i'm still pinching myself that we actually got him in hand and that leads the first spot it had to go to Transformers Dark of the Moon Leader Class Shockwave. There was no question that this guy was really and truly going to make it up high on the list, let alone take first spot. In regards to accuracy of the movie, this figure looks killer. Dare I say it's probably one of the most accurate looking Averse mainline movie figures that we've ever seen. The robot mode literally looks as if though it's jumped straight out of the ILM CAD files and into a plastic format. They did a fantastic job, not only in terms of the accuracy and the sculpting, but the paintwork for a mainline figure too is astonishing. Those metallic purple accents that we've got going on just looks so awesome the arm cannon's massive and the original voyager figure that we saw for transformers 3 2 was a fantastic figure but this just kind of evolved on that it just looked so so much cooler it was a leader class meaning that it was a lot bigger when in comparison to that voyager offering and overall in my opinion it is by far one of the best movie figures that we've ever seen sadly if i were to be nitpicky the alt mode isn't the best it just kind of transforms into a tank but that was the same vehicle mode that they gave him originally in 2011 for the voyager assortment so i can't complain about that articulation was great maybe the weapons was slightly too pliable due to the PVC material but to be fair the skull work is actually quite sharp so had they cast them out of solid plastic I don't really think that it could have been maybe a health hazard but definitely if you can only pick up one figure for Transformers Dark of the Moon it would have to be either Shockwave or Dino and if push come to shove I'd probably say Shockwave just as he is such a beast of a figure and with all that being said that just about wraps up my worst to first ranking for the Transformers Dark of the Moon Studio Series figures. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear your own rankings down in the comment section below. Do you guys agree with some of the picks that I've put on this list? Would have you maybe ranked figures slightly higher or slightly lower? Definitely feel free to you know down in the comment section below and if there's a specific ranking video that you guys would like me to produce also drop that down in the comments. I thank you all so much for watching and until my next video I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.